Arthur Hayes has a dire warning for Bitcoin. He says that the spot Bitcoin ETF could destroy Bitcoin. Heidi is going to cover that. I've had a lot of questions about this. We have had a lot of questions about this, and it seems to be a big concern amongst a lot of people. But first, I'm going to cover a couple of tweets right now. Willy Wu says, the eve before Bitcoin spot ETF. Uh, the day is coming fast when Bitcoin becomes mainstream bucket for wealth allocation. When that day comes, the top 1%, okay, so the top wealthy 1% of the world will hold to go around 0.87 Bitcoin. That's how little there is to go around. <laughs> that is, and, and that's like going to decrease big time because there's more people out there that aren't going to get rid of their Bitcoin, no matter really what the price is. And plus, you're going to have BlackRock, you're going to have Fidelity, you're going to have all these big boys and family offices and countries and so on. And Toby over here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Accumulating more Bitcoin. So that number is going to drop massively uh, within a week. <laughs> Every week it goes down. Next, we have the SEC tells uh, spot Bitcoin ETF applicants to update submissions by December 29th if they want to be approved um, in the first wave. This is according to Reuters. The first of many waves. Yes. Uh I think it's going to happen. There's so many people out there that think, nope, it's not going to happen. And the price of Bitcoin is going to go way down. Oh, man, I, I don't think that's going to happen. All right. We also have, lastly, your 401ks. This is from CNBC. The spot Bitcoin ETF race could quickly reach your 401k retirement plan. So what's going to happen is that in, um, there's going to be a ton of regulations that come out that are going to be very clear. The barrier of entry is actually going to be higher to, for regular people to get into Bitcoin. I've been, we, Heidi and I have been explaining this for a while now. And I think this is the way, hey, you can put in your 401k plan, but you're probably not going to be able to take custody of those coins, right? Well, yeah, because the, the number one rule here is that a Bitcoin ETF or any derivative of that, it's not Bitcoin. It is a Bitcoin byproduct of the Bitcoin, the real Bitcoin that these entities are actually holding. So you're not holding Bitcoin, you're holding a contract tied to the Bitcoin that they're holding. And basically, you're just getting exposure to the price changes. It is good for the price, but that's about it. Yeah, it's good for the price in the short term. Uh, but there, it opens the door for price manipulation. Which you're about to get into. Yeah. But let's get to the point of today's video. Arthur Hayes, like two, three days ago, published in his blog how a Bitcoin ETF could actually legitimately, he thinks, kill Bitcoin. Like, stop the network, kill Bitcoin. Which is an interesting take. But if you know anything about the mechanisms of what drives uh, the incentive models of mining Bitcoin itself, you know that Satoshi has thought of this. He has. So what, what Arthur Hayes is saying is that if BlackRock and these handful of institutional investors are owning the vast majority of Bitcoin in the network and they're just holding it and what they're doing is issuing these like derivative products, not real Bitcoin, not using the Bitcoin network, then he is saying theoretically no Bitcoin would be used on the network. No transactions would be happening. Nothing would be incentivizing miners to mine. They wouldn't be getting paid in uh, transaction fees. We still have like over 100 years of them to still be paid in block rewards. But uh, the whole concept of Bitcoin mining, for those of you who aren't familiar, there's a lot of people who aren't, is that the more miners that join the network, the more difficult it is to mine. There's more competition, basically, that you're up against. And the difficulty level is rising as the number of miners are rising on the network. That kind of keeps things even keel so that not one person can have too much control over the network. As miners are leaving the network, that difficulty is readjusted every two weeks. So as miners are leaving the network, the difficulty lessens. That means 
if if what Arthur Hayes comes to fruition, it means that potentially we could see the same levels and, and ease of mining as we did in 2011, Woo-hoo! 2012, where that you can mine on your CPU. Can you imagine mining on your laptop? Mm-hmm. And so there is that that uh, balance mm-hmm. of that of incentive models and game theory basically that satoshi has come a part of so also not only would it be easier to mine but transaction fees would probably be cheaper and not to mention the price of bitcoin would be what it was but to actually transact on the network would be much cheaper and to mine it would be much cheaper so i don't think that these etfs could kill bitcoin or the bitcoin network um, but it could definitely shift uh, how Bitcoin mining is done in the future. And and that's totally fine because we actually saw how miners react to really hard times, especially when China yeah. banned Bitcoin mining. What happened? They decentralized. It was pretty cool. So guys, I'm not worried one bit. I've There's lots of questions about that. But if you do want to check out more of what we think about the market pretty much on a daily basis and our entire portfolio, Time's running out. You have, what, four days left mm. to join learningcrypto.com days. Yeah, to, be, to be uh, grandfathered in at the old pricing. We are upping our price. Um, January 1st, 2024, prices go up. So yes. join before then. Definitely. All right. Or join after and, and still be a part of it and, and get all the perks that way as well, you know? Sure. <laughs> Anyways, that's all we have. Please like and subscribe. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys. <laughs>